welcome to Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we have a special guest. We have on Kelly Nichols. Kelly is from Riley's LA Guns. LA Guns, way back, uh, even a little faster, Pussycat for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and uh, uh, Yeah, until I hit a car. Yeah, like, I know, so you got hit. And what was, what was the other band? Was it Sweet Pain or um, you know, yeah, another band sweet, too? Like, sweet Pain was in uh, in Brooklyn or in uh, New York, yeah. Yeah, I just saw that uh, I saw that online the other day. It's like, what is that, Kelly's? And then I listened to it, it's pretty fun. But, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you got to take it with a grain of salt because of the time period and the music and stuff, but it's fun. Yeah. You know, well, let me say, hey, Sean, nice to be here, man. Let's, uh, let's have a good time. We are going to have a good time. We, I know we, I want to take back to the audience. We, we were going to do this once before, and I, uh, <clears throat> was new to this recording thing and it totally went out the window. So, <laughs> I want to thank you for coming back, and, and to everyone out there, when the album comes out, uh, Cuz can going to come back, and he's going to look all, all pretty, and he's going to come on, and we're going to do a video talk. But now, I want to talk about, A, you guys did Renegades, and it seems like it was not that long ago, but it's actually been a little bit, a hot minute now, as I look over here at the, uh, God, when did that go out, like two years ago, three? It's almost been a while. Uh, <laughs> yeah, November 13th, 20, uh, 2020. Yeah. Okay. So that's about two years. To me, like with this COVID, everything the time just froze for me. So I. Yeah. Big time I, when you guys got together, and you and you, so you guys got together with your uh, with the version you guys the split up version. Then there was the battle, which we don't need to get into because it's kind of lame. Yeah. And obviously, it's 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 a brand thing, and I think the fans really are just tired of it. They just love. It's like two bands they get to love instead of one. I mean that's. That's how yeah. I know most of the people I know, and that's really comes down to. So it's not it's not about slagging anybody, but obviously the challenge was brand recognition because everyone knows LA Guns, and if you go to a club, you can make more money as LA Guns than as anything else. So I get that. Once you got that album out, and and so what's funny is LA Guns it still gets put together on iTunes and Spotify and everything else. It still goes in the same bin, <laughs> ironically. Yeah. yeah. Um, first question about that is actually I see. You guys have um, vicious, vicious circles on Spotify, but it's not on iTunes. Is there? You know why? Uh, that is a damn good question. I do not know why. <laughs> because that's like my favorite album. I don't usually listen to Spotify music, and I have iTunes, so I would have seen it. And like every Ellie Guns on the planet, yeah, is on iTunes. I get, yeah, sometimes I get notices from Spotify that they're adding a new uh, record. So I know that they added a couple this year. And yeah. Um, yeah, so you got to kind of keep checking. It's weird how they work. They just kind of, I just get notices that this record is going to be added soon, you know, to your uh, catalog. So, you know, I, I thought it would be, uh, I thought it'd all be up there by now, but, you know, I guess they right. don't work like that. It's, it's interesting because I figured, well, maybe it's a different label thing because I know LA Guns was on a, a variety of labels over the years, like most yeah, bands. Two, two labels, I think, um, Polygram and, uh, one record on A&M, I think we did. Oh, that's Vicious the early, Circle. yeah. Yep. And then after that, I think it went everywhere. <laughs> Sanctuary. Oh, Cold yeah, after that, like that. Yeah, I'm thinking it's been so many, so I don't even know like how it's got to be a challenge yeah, for, for a band on any level to get everything yeah. out there. You guys just have no control at this point. <laughs> it's out of control, man. <laughs> you know? It is a train wreck. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, in LA Guns, there's like a lot of fans. There's, there's a lot of off shots of the band and like... Um, Paul Mars Black, uh, he, he had an album out, so his, he's part of the L.A. Guns family, the early early version, you know. There's a lot of stuff out there that's branched off and continued on from L.A. Guns. Uh, yeah, you know, there's a little bit part of a thing, man, so, you know, it's kind of um, it's kind of uh, in there when you think of 80s music. If you were into that kind of music, you know, we were up there a little bit. We did okay, you know, we, we played a lot of shows and... Uh, and toured a long time and uh, we put a lot of work in. So it was, uh, you know, it was great. You were a big part of the certain thing of the Ballad of Jane, you being a co writer in that song. That was a song that did a big dent in the world of ballads and rock ballads, you know? Yeah. There's no, there's no denying that song really was part of, I mean, there's a couple of other bands, but yeah, it was part of the resurgence of the power ballad, you know? Well, they Definitely. were popular back then, man. You know, ballads, I know they were, and they were good. You know, there was a lot of good songs that uh, I agree with you. They came out of these bands that you know could all write and could all play, and uh, you know, we were just doing our thing, man. You know, it's there's all different kinds of music. That's what's amazing about music, and uh, 
you know, it was a scene too, though. So it was cool. It was like a whole look coming out. There was a whole vibe coming out. It wasn't just kind of, uh, you know, great songs coming out of nowhere. There was also like, you know, fashion was involved in it. Yes. As hairstyles and, you know, uh, it caught on, uh, you know, swept the nation for a minute, man. And it was a lot of fun. It was a fun period, you know. Well, and I, I, it really comes down to, though, a good song is a good song. Just like we were talking about a few exactly, minutes ago, yeah. Modern English, you know, uh, you know, Battle Jane, like these songs, everybody knows. And it's not about all sense like it's the big 80s, it's the 90s and the shoegaze. It's a good song. It's just a good song. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and uh, it was, yeah. uh, you know, you're lucky to have one. <laughs> you know, I, you think I, they're all good songs, but, you know, you don't know what people are going to like. So, well, as a fan, I like to see a band get successful. Usually it's the ballads on a lot of bands. Or at least the ones you get sick of because you hear those the most. Um, luckily, you guys didn't get, didn't get burned out on that one. What I really love is actually in Vicious Circle is when you came out and you actually sang on a song. Yeah, that was nothing. Was that was pretty cool. That was pretty faster. fun though. <laughs> what? What? How did that happen? Because that's always been a question of mine. I was like, what the hell? I'll, 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 now you start doing it. Now you start singing. <laughs> no man, I uh, you know, uh, let's see. The the music was written. Right. Okay. I think I wrote the music for that and. Um, and then we had to do uh, lay some lyrics down on it. And by the time we got to it in the studio, it was really late at night. And everybody went out to uh, dinner somewhere in L.A. And I stayed at the studio with the engineer. And I just laid down a guide vocal for Phil with shit I made up off my mind, like right there on the spot. <laughs> like, I really I wrote those lyrics down in like 36 seconds. The pedestrian you know? lyrics. And those are awesome. I just, uh, um, I just uh, did like one take of it. And then when they came back from dinner, uh, we played it for Phil and he said, uh, he loved it and he said, that's it, it's done, mate. And I was like, okay, and uh, go ahead and try it. He's like, no, no, it's done, I'm not, you know, it's like, that's the way it is. Like my vocal was this vocal on that song and he wouldn't, he wouldn't do a vocal, he wouldn't do it. That's so it crazy. just ended up being like, you know, it wasn't planned out to be me singing it at all because I really don't think I have a good voice at all. So I wasn't planning on singing it. But once it's on tape, man, you're screwed, you know? <laughs> it sounded good. It sounded good. It was really very punk. It was punk. It was really Sid Vicious. It was, you know, and, and you know, like, it was, and, and Duff that, had just, a, right? I know, it's because I'm Sid Vicious. <laughs> but that's what it was. It was very earthy, very kind of gritty. It sounded good. The vocals weren't bad, I think, but it was right. fun. It was very, it was very, very different. It's a good you know, rude but, one off, I think, you know, kind of thing. Not something I would do uh, again by any means, but yeah, it's just weird how it happens, you know. It what about doing that song live? I will do that song live probably. Yes. At the Mohegan, man. It's a good, uh, fun energy song. So that is a leading. So let's talk about that right now. Like, let's just go into it. So you guys are getting ready to do some touring. We'll talk about the, you have an album at some point coming, but you're actually starting to hit the road now or doing some shows. The Mohegan, right, we're only that, doing that three first? shows this year. Okay, that's it. That's it, man. It's all uh, wow. that's, that's all that's going to happen for this year. Yeah, it's just a weird year, man. There's a lot going on. Okay. So uh, we got the Mohican Sun, yeah, coming up on the September 10th. And then we got the uh, Cannery Casino in Las Vegas on the 24th of September. Then on October, I'm not sure the date, we have the, uh, we're at the America. Oh, well, let me say that we're with Great White at the Cannery Casino in Las Vegas. So, and then we're with Slaughter at the Maristar Casino in Kansas City, in Missouri. Sweet. At, and then that's it. And then we have the first single is coming out. <laughs> yes. Uh, bless you. The first single is coming out. <laughs> I think it's soon. a COVID overlap. I'm soon. Gonna be able to, I'm going to be able to announce the date. We have the date for the first single, so I'm going to be able to announce it very uh, shortly. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, timing is everything, and the name of the record and the name of the song will be coming out shortly as well. I'm working on the artwork right now. Um, I'm gonna do some vinyl. Got a couple, definitely got a few surprises coming out. Uh, different things are gonna be happening with it, and uh, it's gonna be kind of exciting. We're, we've been looking forward to it, man. Awesome. Well, like I said, I want you back. Hopefully, be one of the top of your list there to come back. We can really break down the album. Yeah, I miss I miss the opportunity to uh, to do do the, do uh, Renegades. Yeah, um, what an interesting sound because Renegades does have the LA Guns family feel to it, but a lot yeah. darker. But it still has a, a, a like it's like dark pop. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you always have, yeah. have, 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 it always has a melody, 
it can still be kind of dark and it doesn't have to be a big epic chorus, but it's always got a melody running through it in every one of those songs. Oh, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, uh, well, you know, we're, we're sticking with our wheelhouse, you know, we're just, it's kind of like we've, you know, we wrote a lot of stuff in the, in the you know, real uh, uh, version, the earlier version, <laughs> you, know, like, uh, you know, but uh, I could say it, man. Yeah, the real version when it was happening, you know. So we were part of that sound. So, you know, we still had to carry that over. And the other guys are just fucking amazing guys to be in a band with. And mm -hmm. uh, just the, the coolest musicians I've ever played with, man. So easy to work with. It's really unreal. Or else I probably wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> you know. Well, it looks like on your page you actually had done some other bands. It looks like you, you guys you got a little older and your kids was it your your, your daughter or someone your kids you get a little older you wanted to start playing out a little bit more, a little more free time. Well, it just well it just happened when Steve called me about doing this project was like just when my daughter was going to college, so I was like you know gonna not have that uh, that responsibility around every day anymore. You know, the kid was going yep. to, to school out of state and, uh, you know, I got some free time back. So, and it was just weird because then like Steve, you know, called me out of the blue and asked, uh, you know, uh, told me about this project and, you know, what he wanted to do. And it was just going to be one show. You know, we were, uh, the guys at M3 offered, uh, <coughs> offered in the, a slot, you know, with yeah. LA Guns. It's like, you know, they... And the other LA guns didn't want to do it for some reason. So he said, they said, Steve, put a band together with some of the older musicians that have been through the band and come play a, a set. So he called uh -huh. me up and asked me if I wanted to do bass. And I was like, well, let's talk about it. Like what, uh, what, uh, you know, what does this all entail and everything? And who else is going to play? And originally there were two different guys who were going to be in the band and they both bowed out and uh other projects that they had going on and this was only going to be one show but we were lucky to get these two guys that we have scott and kurt and it has just been a really super fun project man i'm glad you guys have all stayed together because you know out of the gate there's a lot of regular musicians that maybe didn't get the same accolades are now having opportunities from other bands that were larger to come into the ranks and fill in spots and play with them yeah but then you also they're at a point where you, you know, it happened to the guys when they did this, like another version of Rat, they got beat down. So it's also, you know, the, a lot of these guys get a chance to get a little more notoriety, but then they, they get in the middle of the crossfire of, of the LA Guns family feud. Yeah, you know? exactly. So there's that, but I'm glad you guys all stuck together and pushed through it. I'm glad you guys have been able to sort out on somewhat the name so both bands can keep pursuing, you know? Um, yeah, really. At this point, it's like you know, whatever, man. What is it? We all just want to play, and you know. Uh, well, that's the thing. The band just want, don't want to hear it anymore. I, you know, everyone says, "Yeah, Phil and Tracy jam. You guys are great. You know, Kelly, Steve jam. You guys are great. There's two albums we get to hear a year, whatever. But we don't need to hear Mom and Dad fight anymore in the kitchen. You know, it's like <laughs> let's yeah, just you move forward. That. You, you're not. You're not. You haven't heard no. any of that from us. Not, no, not I, you haven't. One single note. So. You know, we're going to keep it that way. We're going to do our thing. We're just going to enjoy life and play some music, you know. No, that's we good. All, no, we all, you know, we're part of it, and we all earned a spot, and we all earned a chance, you know. So it's, uh, well, yeah. none of us could have got there without the other ones of us, you know, without the rest of us. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if you guys could get all, if you guys, I even had to get either band, it'd be nice if you guys could all just, like, be able to say, all right, we're on the same page. High five. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be, be nice. It'd be, it would be nice if that ever happened. Just, a, just as a friendly thing. You, you guys have created so much together. Um, how are you going to choose a set list? Because you have a new album that we're not talking about yet. So you, obviously you have songs. Are you going to do any new songs? Old LA Gun songs, songs from the uh, Renegades. How are we breaking it down? Yeah, we're going to do the. Uh, we're going to do songs that uh, we uh, worked on that we were uh, from records that we played on, Steve and mm -hmm. I played on, and songs that we recorded with the band. We only do those songs, you know, Electric Gypsy, Never Enough, Ballad of Jane, of course, and, uh, you know, uh, a handful of others over the edge and stuff like that. So we, um, and then we throw in, uh, you know, we throw in quite a bit from uh, Renegades, you know? So we kind of mix it up a little bit of that. And I don't know if we're going to do any new stuff off this new record yet, but... You never know. Well, it's not released. It's going to be a challenge because you know the minute you do it, it's going to be out there. Mm -hmm. you, you won't be off the stage and it will be up on YouTube. 
You know? Yeah, that's okay, man. That's you know, it's all good, man. I'm just saying, you know, if you're you know waiting for yeah. time to be everything you want. <laughs> There, there are no rules for we don't feel like there are any rules anymore for us you know we can just kind of do what we want man we're doing our own thing we're not hurting anybody no and uh you know if you like it you like it what's the plan for like so like with next year are you guys gonna get in a regular touring thing again or is it being gonna have kind of a, a um you know a lighter schedule well we'll definitely have uh the you know the record out and everything and then we'll have to you know see see what comes with that you know see mm. if the uh I know you have a company of your own that you work at, and I know, I know but Steve's had always been like just like a road dog forever. I think yeah. he's been in every every version of LA Guns from the very beginning. It feels like, and I could be wrong. I'm sure someone could check me on an album I missed or something somewhere. But I, he's been in there. That seems like the most. So oh, he's been more a road person. So like, and I know a lot of some of these guys and artists have other bands at their side things. So it's kind of hard to get four guys or five guys and whatever whatever the band is. Yeah, all it's a hobby again this nowadays. Point, man. You know, it's a hobby for us just to go out and play a little bit and have mm -hmm. a little bit of good weekend. You know, that's it, man. That's all that's it is at this point. You know, it's like you're only doing it because you love doing it. You know, you ain't doing it for the money, that's for sure. So <laughs> you're doing. We're all doing it because we love doing it. That's the only reason, man. Well, the one of the good things though is they, these these flyout dates though that have become very popular, like the monsters of this and the monsters of that, and the rocket cruises and stuff. It's a good thing for an artist nowadays because you can just pick up and take off on a Saturday or the weekend and fly out. You see some of the gears there for you. You can play and fly back in and have the rest of your week and not be on a bus, you know? Yeah, that's how we're doing it, man. We're only doing like, you know, a handful of shows. Even last last, last year we toured, it was, uh, you know, it was every couple of weeks, every other weekend, something like that. It was a pretty light schedule. It was you just pop in for a week and have fun, play a little music. Meet some cool people, you know, have a drink and go home, man. It's good. That's I don't want to sit right. on a bus, uh, you know, 68 hours. I couldn't imagine doing that when I was 20 years old, you know. I, no? I joke about, I'm like, I couldn't, I didn't want to go across the, my, the town where I live in a car with all my family, you know. I get to a cagey. I, I think it would be too much to be in a bus with somebody. <laughs> well, no, it was so. great back in the day because we were young and it was like, you know, it was totally different. It was, you know, you could take the beating, you know. Could I mean? you imagine, like, the stuff that went on back then with, like, cameras and the internet and phones with cameras? It would oh have been so God. different. <laughs> yeah. Everybody would be canceled at, at a certain age. If you were, like, over, like, 40 years old, you would have been canceled out, period. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, you know, the stuff that went on and how it went and it was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a whole new world. But luckily, you're, you've moved on, but you're a dad and you're touring. So, yeah, it is a hobby. It's fun. You're playing music again. Did you ever stop, like, writing songs during a break? Oh, yeah. You put your bass yeah, down, too? I'll, or do you I'll play record, once in a while? Like, I'll keep recording, like, little bits and pieces sometimes, you know, when I play. If I if I play something that I like, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll record it on my phone really quick. And, um, you know, but for me, like, to write songs, I really need a deadline. <laughs> that's the problem like i'll just write down like you know i have i have like thousands of ideas man you know little riffs that i that i like or melodies that i like but unless i really know that they're going to be heard i kind of you know or, or i need like a deadline to know that you know you got to hand in your song by you know the, the end of the month and that's it you got to finish it like you have to you force yourself to finish it to come right. up with other parts because one part you know, you have one melody that sounds good, but you need a couple other melodies and you need another thing and you need a pre-chorus and a big chorus or whatever or something, uh, you know, so you got to you got to come up with the other pieces. And that's sometimes you piece things together, and, you know. Well, and that's interesting because like the, the Renegades, if you got to refresh my mind, it's been a, a while. That was when I, we talked, you guys wrote it partially together and you guys brought stuff in and kind of wrote it, but, but you guys were in the same room together like human beings. And kind of hashed it out, right? Well, we live in four different states. So we I thought you guys did some recording together. Like you actually kind of tweaked out the songs, recording them together on the first album, not this one, the first one. Yeah, no, the first one, everything was done through the computer, man. Everything, really? Every every track was sent to everybody and everybody like started out with like, you know, when I had the uh, lyrics, I, when I had my song with uh, the music and lyrics ready to go, like, I always write the lyrics to my songs, so I wrote, uh, I sent them all to Kurt, and then I, I do a guide vocal for him, so he has an idea of the melody that I'm thinking about, and then he'll do it and send it back to me, and I'll say, like, you know, yeah, 90% of it's great, let's tweak out this little part right here or something, and uh -huh. then... Uh, 
then he'll uh, lay some guitar on it. Then we send it to uh, Scotty, and uh, and then uh, we don't get him back. We we use drum like drum. I use a drum track, a drum machine to get the drums for my songs, and then yeah, I tell Steve like kind of what I was hearing, you know, what I think would go good with it. So. Um, but Steve already kind of knows, like, he just like lays it down. It's like, no problem, you know, yeah, so, at this point, at this point, right. At this point, yeah. He's like, I got this. So, um, so yeah, everything just kind of works like that, you know, and then Kurt sends me his songs and then, uh, uh, you know, we all learn them and then we have to, you know, we have two days of rehearsals. We, we had two days of rehearsals. Even this time was the exact same process as the last time. Uh, two you days guys got of locked down, huh? How's, what's that? So you guys got that locked down, huh? We got it locked down, man, because everybody really puts in 100% in this project. So it's been cool. So we have two days to rehearse everything together. So we go through the set. We go through the, you know, the list for the for the record uh, a few times. And then we touch everything up. And then the things that we can, you know, the last bits that we, I mean, we work till the very end, like kind of just tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and coming up with, uh, you know, to the little melody line twists and stuff that we didn't hear before. You know, as you as you listen to it over and over again yeah. while you're recording it, you hear more, you hear more things. So then you're like, oh, let's, let's you know, twist this just a little bit, change this line to this, or you know, throw this guitar in, and it's killer, man. And it kind of, and then you know, like I mean, Scotty Griffin did some amazing guitar work on this record. I'm gonna oh, go. He's, he's really good. No, he's a really. Oh good my guitar god, player. he he did such amazing stuff on this record that it's really you know it's gonna put him up at a higher level, man. He just killed it. So some beautiful stuff he laid down. So everybody did. Uh, so you know, with two days, okay, so with two days in the studio of rehearsals, you know, then we go into record and we start with the drums and the bass and. You know, we just keep adding on to that. We have like five days to do it, you know, so like we have a total of seven days to do a record. Oh, so you guys are at least recording it live though, right? Oh yeah, we're recording it live. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. Like you guys had done like, oh, a lot of bands now. Two years ago, this conversation would have been like, I wouldn't have thought like that, but a lot of bands are actually sending stuff back and forth. Yeah. And that's oh, how they record the album. The, we go into He's, the studio, but we do uh, it like track by track. Okay, yeah. Okay, you know, but so but we definitely go into a real a real studio, Stag Street Studios in uh, North Hollywood, and um, the, the amazing place. And uh, so we were all together for you know those uh, seven days that week. We're all together and we're all you know working on it together. So it's expensive unless you were smart and you were somebody like when you had the money from the record labels and you bought your own studio with the money and you kept the money and, <laughs> and did all the recording. I mean. The studio's yeah, a we, waste we, of money in the back in the day. A lot of money got wasted writing a song in a studio. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. <laughs> what we an anxiety had, attack I would have had. Huh. We don't have the budgets <laughs> like that anymore. You had, like, endless budgets back then. You know, you could spend three months writing a record in a nice studio, and then you could go record it for another two or three months recording I know. It, it did always make it, make it better, though, because it almost gave you too much crap or too much everything. You weren't focused. You, didn't, you weren't hungry, you know? Oh, well, I, I you know. The, Not the you, writing, just in general, though. Yeah, I mean the writing process. We would, you know, we would we would write uh, like and just go through every song twice, like in a row. We would just go through the whole set twice, go over it and over. We went over it so many times, so that when you get into the studio, you know, you're just a machine. But you can do yeah. it in five days too, man. So if you really try, well, that's the whole point. I think it's better that bands do it nowadays. It's less of a waste. <laughs> You know yeah it's like you know it's uh it's it's cool man it's like you just go in and kill it and go home and have a fun week with the guys you know we go out to dinner and stuff and uh you know went to the rainbow one time and uh and then go out and have some drinks together and stuff to have dinner uh so it's a good week man well especially for you because you're based over on the east coast like me yep going over and seeing the old stuff is probably more fun than being over there now <laughs> um it's fun probably fun to go back it's like a vacation for you right Oh uh, yeah, we're going back to LA. Yeah, yeah, LA. It's not the same anymore, as what I've heard. Um, you know, there's a lot going on there. Always, man, the place is always changing, always growing, yeah. always changing. Um, uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, sometimes it's good to go and see. You know, right? Good, good to visit. It's what is a the place, man? I, mean, I still don't really feel like a super connection to it, you know. It's well, it's just, changed it's, a lot too. Though. I mean, you know, it's really that, it just doesn't have that very homely, pers homely personal vibe. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're from uh, New York, right? Originally, anyhow, yeah, or... mostly from New York. Yeah. So you're, you know, 
you know, an East Coaster transplant anyhow. So, I mean, going from New York to LA anyhow, it's going to be a hard change. <laughs> well, you know? I, I was like, I was, I was missing, uh, I was missing the seasons. That's what I did. I went to, uh, when I moved to Georgia, I'm from Connecticut. And I same, actually the same times you guys were doing your things. I went down to recording school in Georgia, you know, 89 or whatever. And I was like, this is awesome. Like for the first three months. And then like, there's like no snow, no nothing. And I'm like, all right, nothing. I'm like, I'm like, I need seasons. There was like one season. It's hot. It's just hot yeah. all the time. And I'm yeah. like, I need California my seasons. California just beautiful every day. And so, you know, I, but uh, I was there for 25 years, man. But I feel like, uh, you know, I like things change. Like when summer comes, like my daughter's excited and summer's coming, you know. Yeah. So you have something to look forward to. Even fall is coming and spring is coming. And and I can deal with the winters, no problem. I don't care. It's more uh, uh, fun. I have my Jeep. I guess go smashing around places and stuff. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'll go wherever, man. So I like it. Things change, you know. It's always uh, it's, you, you feel the earth moving. I don't know. <laughs> what, what is so on your other business? Obviously, you're a very creative person. What is your other business? Was is it graphics? You just yeah, I have a Montauk Salvage Company. I do. Uh, I've been doing computer graphics since 1993. I got my first Mac, and I've been, uh, you know, I do projects for whatever, all kinds of stuff, uh, books, magazines. I've done, uh, you know, logos, uh, ads. Uh, you know, uh, just all kind of whatever graphic arts stuff uh, I can get. So I do, you know, just work on my own and stuff. And I have uh, a few friends that do different things if I need, you know, and, uh, and we work together and uh, uh, it's cool. I do all the packaging for, I did all the packaging for Renegades. I'm doing all the packaging and artwork for this one. Um, laying that out right now as we speak. So, uh, you know, it keeps me busy. And then I do my own like t-shirts and stuff and I do my own designs just for the heck of it. And I have them for sale on Zazzle. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. I'll put the link actually, if you, if you get a website, uh, if you want, I'll put it under here too. So people can, if they want to yeah, sure, look you up or if they need the business or whatever, I might have to talk to you about shirts afterwards myself. Um, yeah, I'll have some there at the show. I'm going to bring some. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. So people, you know, we'll do this again. But I just wanted to get this out here, and, and, and we wanted to lock this, this down with uh, me and Kelly. Check out the show on the 10th or um, September 10th. That's a, that's the first one. Um, twenty-two. Yep. And then there's the yeah, twenty-two. What? Right? <laughs> yeah, twenty-two. And then you know what I, when you, when you when you see like something advertised and you don't see like what year it is, you just yeah. don't even know if it's coming up or if it was already like an old ad from. <laughs> it's just like I always. Put, put, the, put the year on our stuff so you know like what it is well you actually have it up on your um instagram page and yeah i have it up there at riley's la guns.com has everything that's going on right now and all the new uh stuff will be posted uh that's our official website there's a link to my company montauk salvage at the bottom if you want to check that stuff out yeah and, we'll put we'll put all the links underneath the podcast and, and this yeah. video this video of audio um, yeah, audio. Next right. time video. Next time video, and probably do it sooner than later because the album's coming, and I wanna I wanna do a, a breakdown this time with you on the album. Yeah. Talk about the songs, okay, um, and really kind of push it out there for people. Kelly, I want to I want to thank you, man, and hopefully I'll be able to see you uh, on um, September tenth, twenty twenty two. Yes, twenty twenty two. Maybe I'll just I'll reach out to you before then. And, and if anybody else is going, uh, hit me up and maybe I can say hi to you guys out there too. Uh, I, my, my rear appearance is going out in, in public, so this is awesome. Right, me too, man. <laughs> I don't go out very often. I, I did I oh, like man. three concerts this past year, and then I don't leave the house. Yeah, I've been you to know? three grocery stores this year. That's it. <laughs> See? That's what it is. You know, and that part doesn't bother me. It's just like the only reason I'm like, going out now is literally just for some concerts, you know? Like I said earlier, yeah, I went to so I went it's, it's fun, you know, it does bring people together. It does bring people we've we've known and seen throughout the years, you know, where it's like uh, some of the same people still coming around from years ago. So yeah. it's always it's fun, fun to just get out and have a good weekend and get some fresh air and, you know, play a little music, a little rock and roll. Man, it's, it's a good gig to have right now at this point. Just a fun little hobby to enjoy. And that's why we just want to be happy and enjoy it and no problems man awesome well, thank you but so thank you sean time. man i'm glad we were able to do this again and uh promise next time i'll uh i'll be on there with you live <laughs> we'll go through the whole thing man all right awesome